everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Connie from Faf Designs and I am a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint. This piece behind me is extra special today um, because it features a stencil on the top drawer that I have helped create along with Dixie Bell. So it's inspired by Faf Designs. So for me it's a super special piece and I hope you enjoy the video. So this piece was made from solid oak and I knew I wanted to use some of that gorgeous grain which was hidden underneath that dark varnish. So after I had cleaned with Dixie Bell's White Lightning, I sanded the top drawer, the top of the unit back to raw wood. So I took all of that dark varnish off and you can see that it's revealing the gorgeous oak grain underneath. I also decided that the wood grain was so lovely on this piece um, that I was going to expose the base of it as well which had a gorgeous shape to it so after I'd sanded the flat areas I used um, a folded up piece of sandpaper just to get into all the nooks and crannies to get that dark varnish off. The rest of the piece was scuff sanded and you can see the difference between scuff sanding on those two drawers versus the top, the base and the top drawer that I took it right back to the oak grain. And now I'm just removing any dust from sanding because otherwise that will get mixed in with your paint and obviously it won't leave a very smooth surface. Once I'd got rid of all the dust off the surface, I used one of my all-time favourite colours. I say that quite a lot, but this one seriously is an all-time favourite colour um, of mine. It's called Collard Greens, and it's a rich, deep, dark green colour, and it's gorgeous. So I thought, paired with oak, it would look really, really nice. I'm using a Dixie Bell synthetic mini brush to apply the collard greens. I'm using a very, very slight spritz of water in the continuous mister bottle. Um, all the products that I use, as always, are going to be listed below in the description. And I'm just applying it with long brush strokes because I just want a um, smooth, full coverage for this piece. So the brush I'm using for the carcass is a mini angled brush. This is really, really good for cutting in. So because I had sanded the top down and I'd also sanded the base back to raw wood, I wanted a nice clean line where the painted area and the wood area were going to meet. So this, this paintbrush is really, really good for getting really crisp lines.
again just using the mini angle brush to cut in on that top bit where this where the sanded back oak meets the painted surface you can use masking tape to tape this off if you want a clean line but I didn't in this instance Now for the exciting bit, I got to use my stencil for the first time, I was super excited to get this one out, so I laid it out on the drawer, I didn't tape it in place, again you can use masking tape to secure it or you can use a low tack adhesive spray if you're worried about the stencil moving, but I didn't. You can just see to the bottom of the screen I'm loading up my roller so I used a roller to apply the paint on this piece and you basically use it in a very very similar way to how you would a brush so you have to load it up and then remove the excess paint because what you don't want to do is have too much paint on your brush or your roller or your sponge dabber however you're going to apply your paint through the stencil you do not want to have too much product on there so remove the excess onto a rag or a shop cloth and that way it reduces the bleed through moment of truth make sure everything looks like it's had paint on it and voila there is lotus bloom so i designed this stencil so that it could be quite versatile and allow you to use separate parts of it depending on your preference so you can tape areas off and just for example use the bottom half or the top half so that it's like i say a versatile stencil It's also been made into a continuous pattern so you can use it from left to right or from top to bottom and it will create a continuous pattern. So I'm just lining it up from the previous piece that I'd done, adding a little bit more paint to my roller and removing the excess and then basically just doing exactly the same process on the next panel. So you can see the pattern is continuous across the front of the drawer and then I removed the stencil and added it back onto the final position which is the very very end, just lined it up and repeated the process again.
so I set that drawer aside that I'd stenciled and I'm just giving it the rest of the piece a light sand with a Dixie Bell sanding sponge which is equivalent to a 220 grit I'm then removing the dust from that with a microfiber cloth and then I'm applying my second coat of collard greens using the same brush that I'd used previously I just wrapped it in a bag to keep it from drying out I'm using my continuous mister bottle just to help the paint flow and give really really smooth coverage same again on the carcass where I'd applied the collard greens I'm just literally rubbing over with one pass of a Dixie Bell sanding sponge that's all you need just to so if you want to sand between coats this is all you need to do you don't need to aggressively sand this is absolutely fine just to give you that really really smooth finish So second coat of paint is dried and I'm just going to distress around where the drawers fit into the piece and the drawers themselves. I'm using a sanding pad from my electric sander which has seen better days but I like to reuse where I can and they make really good sanding pa sandpapers to distress with. So I'm just removing the paint to reveal the oak underneath around the edges of where the drawers fit into the carcass of the piece. And I'm also going to distress around the drawer edges as well. Um, there is a slight little bit of detail around the drawer edges, so I'm just trying to catch that and reveal the oak underneath. I started off with a Dixie Bell sanding sponge, but this wasn't quite aggressive enough for me, so I used a slightly higher grit sandpaper, which is a 180 grit. back to the bare wood I am going to wax the piece I'm going to wax it all over um, even where I've painted so I'm starting with the top and I'm actually using a blue applicator sponge to apply my wax with I'm using best and wax in clear which is water based and like I just mentioned I'm using a blue applicator sponge from Dixie Bell to apply wax now if you ever have problems with applying wax and it goes streaky or it's uneven then try a sponge to apply it with I in the past have used dish sponges but I really like the blue applicator sponge because it's a really fine sponge it lays the wax on really evenly you don't get any streakiness you don't get any patchiness back to the painted area so this has been dry for a few hours and I'm now going to seal the paint with Dixie Bell's Best Ang Wax in Clear I'm using the same sponge that I just applied wax to the top with and I'm just adding a thin coat of the wax over the piece you can see it does apply slightly milky but that dries clear that just allows you to see where you've been to make sure you've got full coverage so you can apply the wax liberally I'm just applying it in long strokes because my pieces are long that I'm applying it onto but if you can do it in a circular motion you can do it in an up and down horizontal motion whichever suits you best as long as you get full coverage of the wax over the paint
So you can see here, I'm applying the wax over the stencil drawer. I'm going up and down, I'm going left to right, I'm doing circular motions. I'm just making sure that that wax has had a really, really good coat over the stenciled surface. Then what you're going to do after around about 15 or 20 minutes is take a clean dry microfiber cloth or a rag, a lint free rag or a shop cloth as long as it doesn't leave any lint on your piece and you're going to buff the wax. So what that does is it works the wax into the paintwork which protects it and seals it. It removes any excess wax that you might have put on too thickly and it also buffs it to a really nice sheen. next step is the hardware so i use the original hardware but it was quite dirty and i knew it was brass under there somewhere so i used a product that's available in the uk called brasso i used it with steel wool and i'm sorry about the close-up on the head but i am just using the steel wool to wipe the add the product onto the onto the handle and then buffing it with a shop cloth. So that's quite a time consuming process. I sped it up and chopped a lot of it off because it was boring watching me do all six handles, but I think you'll agree they look really nice back on the drawers. What I did decide, however, though, was that the oak was a little bit too orange toned for my liking. So I am just gonna bring that down a notch by using Bestang Wax in brown, and I'm applying that with the Bestang brush. So even though in a previous step I'd buffed the clear wax to a sheen, it's still absolutely fine to layer waxes after it's been buffed, that's not a problem. I'm using the wax brush as opposed to a sponge to apply this because it gives a much lighter coat. You get more control with the brush than what you do with the sponge. The sponge applies it quite thickly and liberally Whereas the brush, I can just add as much as I need to just tone that orange oak down a little bit. I did exactly the same on all of the areas where I'd sanded back to the oak grain. And you can see the difference here because I've zoomed in a little bit for you. The difference, a light coat of Bestang Wax in Brown, it just knocks that orange tone out of the oak and gives it a really nice warmth. So we are just on the finishing touches now of this piece. I used my hoover to just get any dust out from where I distressed the drawers. And then I use another favorite product of mine, which is Big Mama's Butter in Orange Grove to nourish the oak on the inside of the drawers. I also use this on the drawer sides as well because they were a little bit stiff when they were on the runners pulling them in and out this helps the drawers glide if you do get any drawers that are a little bit sticky big mama's butter works really well to help glide
and that's it that's the finished piece so there's the close-up of the oak top there which i think turned out really nice the stencil detail on the drawer and then the final shot Thanks for watching, I hope you liked the video and I hope you love the stencil that I've created. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos.